really good evening. And Minister, you are welcome, but I have to say I oppose this bill. The time has long passed since the government could seek to, to, to get the benefit of the doubt in relation to COVID-19 measures, because ministers have consistently shown such rank contempt for both houses that any request for new powers ought to be flatly denied. But as usual, it's going to be nodded true by government senators and TDs before us. Watching the Dáil debate on this bill, I was struck by the sheer number of points and questions which were put by Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil TDs on which you, Minister, directly and deliberately ignored. And I've had direct experience of this myself. As you know, on the floor of this House, I asked you detailed questions about the un unconstitutional ban on public mass. That question was dodged on the promise of giving a written response. It took two months for it to issue, and when it arrived, it was a cop-out answer. And that really causes major concerns to me and others about parliamentary accountability these days. But there's a fundamental injustice underpinning this bill. The notion of intergenerational solidarity, so much plugged and promoted by the government when it suits, has been abandoned. A commitment made and restated by the Taunashta as recently as four weeks ago that there would be no discrimination between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated has been cynically abandoned. And all it took was a wave of the magic wand by Enfit uh, and, and a set of ap apocalyptic projections which the Cabinet seemed to accept virtually without question. And Minister, you ignored questions posed by your own government's backbenchers in the Dáil, and so I don't have great confidence that I'll get answers myself here, but I'm going to ask them anyway. Why are we seeking, firstly, to divide younger people from older people who are vaccinated when the government explicitly said at all times for the last 12 months that it wouldn't do that? What is the target date for the introduction of antigen and PCR testing as an alternative to the vaccination passport for entry to pubs and indoor dining? And under this bill, private businesses will be privy to personal medical information. How will this information be held? And doesn't it put uh, business owners in an appalling position legally in terms of the legal obligations around retention, handling and destruction of information? Now, for the whole of the summer of 2020, restaurants and pubs which serve food were open and thriving, although there were restrictions on social distancing, contact tracing, advanced bookings and so on. Now, if you had told anyone back then that in 12 months' time, 4 million vaccine doses would have been administered, 55% of the population fully vaccinated, but that those pubs and restaurants would be closed for indoor hospitality until the 19th of July, and that people would have fewer freedoms for summer 2021 than they did in summer 2020. You'd, you'd have been, they'd have called for the men in white coats, or women in white coats, we'd be, we'd better, it's an equal opportunities profession. And yet here we are, the fact that we are here is an absolute indictment of the Irish political and policy making system. Now, Enfit's, or Neffet's worst case scenario, dropped in its usual bombshell fashion a couple of weeks ago, was that without continuing restrictions, 2170 could die in Ireland by the end of September due to the Delta variant. And as recently as yesterday, they said that even with the restrictions in place, 1800 uh, could be dead in that time. Now, one of the problems we've had since last year is in efforts, apocalyptic predictions uh, th that they've never been tested because they're in the glorious position of being able to essentially predict anything at all in the full knowledge that the government will implement whatever restrictions they seek. And the fact that their worst case scenario doesn't or didn't ultimately happen is then taken as evidence ipso facto that the restrictions sought were justified and had the desired effect. So you have the story of, little, of Chicken Little and the sky falling uh, coming to mind. But for the first time on this occasion, we will have a direct ability to gauge whether NEFID is correct because of the near total relaxation of restriction planned in the United Kingdom next week. If NEFID's doomsday predictions of the Delta variant are accurate, then we should see bodies literally pile up in the UK over the next 10 weeks. If over 2,000 would die in Ireland with no restrictions, then going by NEFID's maths, we should expect to see at least 32,000 deaths in the UK by the end of September, with 900 dead in Northern Ireland. And does anybody believe that there is the slightest chance that that will happen here? Like the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Either 32,000 more deaths will occur in the UK before the end of September, or Neffet's modelling of the impact of the Delta variant is at best entirely wrong. And some people would say it's an attempt to scare the public. And will there be any accountability for Neffet and the government if these projections are shown to be wildly inaccurate? Or will the media and political system simply shrug shoulders in an outbreak of collective amnesia and move on to the next set of projections? The Taunish, I'm sorry, I don't have time to accept it. I regret that. The Taunish that told the Dáil yesterday that there's a prospect that the 45% of unvaccinated population could overwhelm hospitals this summer. 
What is the basis for that claim? And I ask these questions not to be obstructive. We have put up with a lot, but I have a real fear that our culture and our society is changing, and people are being governed now through fear, and it is bad for our society. We have this form of democracy that's Sen changing Senator into Morgan. administrative control of, of people. Um, I, I'll Senator finish. I finish because we've moved from protecting the vulnerable time, to protecting the fearful, and I'm concerned about this approach and the impact it's going to have on our society. Thank you. Yeah.